Okay, today on the workbench I have a Ducks Astroman. This came out uh, about two years before Japan's Mr. Mercury came out. Basically it's a wired remote controlled robot that can walk, bend at the waist, you can raise and lower the arms, and you can open and close the arms. And the uh, Ducks Astroman was first and uh, basically the Mr. Mercury is just a direct mechanical copy. They did simplify a few things in the uh, Mr. Mercury, plus made it larger and all metal body and everything. But uh, this guy was the first, and since I had to uh, take his back off, I thought maybe you might want to take a peek inside and look around him here a little. Let's see, I'll carry... Uh, we've got the battery box here with the four button controls, two D cells. But here you can see that upper motor depending on which direction it runs it flips a little gear one way or the other and there's two gearboxes in here and one gearbox would make these arms open and close and one gearbox would make the arms go up and down they have a, a, a main soldering point for all the wires that come in the back which is a nice improvement the uh, Japanese version didn't and down here you can see this is the motor down below and it's swinging gears in this area again there's two gearboxes when the motor runs one direction it makes the legs move back and forth to walk when the motor runs in the other direction it turns a cam which causes the entire uh, body to bend you might be able to see a little bit more just up in the flap you can see some of the gearbox there we go and this right here that kind of shows up there's the cam it's the die cast cam it interfaces with the body that does the bending and then the legs have die cast cams uh, they're gonna be kind of hard to see you can see a flat one way back in there that performs the uh, walking functions and there's also a light in the chest that comes on whenever the upper motor is on. So in other words, whenever you're moving the arms either up and down or open or close, then that light there would come on. Um, the Dux has a lot more arm movement than the Mr. Mercury version. These arms can go all the way from being complete down to being complete out. So a complete 45 degree swing on the Mr. Mercury one, they uh, changed the mechanics up in the shoulder where you would kind of snap the arms in the different positions and then the motor would just move them a little bit within that definition. So for example, uh, I think the yellow button. Yep. So here you can see how far they were able to go. They went from being completely all the way down in the site to being more than straight out. And I'm going to lower them a little bit and then you've got the green button here which is going to be your open and close. Normally the foam pads would be there, but of course the toy being way over 60 years old, the foam has deteriorated. Um, blue, I think that's bend. Yep. And red should be the walking then. So it's a regular shuffle foot walker with uh, ratchet wheels. It's a very good walker, very stable because you got the oversized feet so that when you're picking up stuff from bending over the robot doesn't topple over. So if you ever have to get in one of these to work, the, uh, the secret to getting in without breaking anything is on the back. There's these little red caps on the front. can't really see if I can hold that so you can see it without my fingers being in the way. See how there's a lip on that part? They pop into these. I'm going to move uh, closer to the camera again here. And i got to hold the robot and the battery box and the, and the back. So you can see these round areas are going to pop into that. And inside those round areas you can see slots. Well that's where this metal tabs on the gearbox for the body We'll poke through the green, you'll give those tabs a little bit of a turn, and then pop the red caps back on. Same thing goes to, true for the uh, front, those red caps. 
if you very carefully take an X-Acto knife to get under the lip between the red and the green, you'll find that the cap itself pops out. When you go to put the body back together, make sure you get the head back in place because it, uh, it tabs in. And uh, one thing you don't see mentioned very often, maybe most people don't know, I don't know, but the head is actually um, glow-in-the-dark plastic. So if you give this a lot of light and then go into a dark room, the whole head glows a ghostly green color, which is kind of cool. And then, of course, there's the whole dome that uh, snaps onto the top over that head. And then there's supposed to be a little antenna that goes on top of that. Well, let's, let's try and put some of this back together. Maybe it'll make a little bit more sense. very old so I'm trying to be very careful with these wires because so far there it's all original and there wasn't anything wrong with the wires when I got the toy is because nothing was working well not that's not quite true the light in the chest would come on and since I know the light in the chest is wired um, in parallel with the upper motor that meant I knew the wiring was okay and I knew that the the battery box was okay so that meant the problem I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here, talking and doing this, because I just did what I was telling you guys not to do. I didn't have the head up in place, and I've, uh, I've worked the upper body back, back all the way on, so now I'm kind of working that off a little bit. Let's see if we can, uh, we can get the head to drop back down in there. Got one side to drop down in. Don't make me take you completely apart again. I think I'm going to have to get a bigger screwdriver to do some prying. See, if I'd had that in place before I pushed the two, there we go, pushed the body halves together, it wouldn't have been an issue. There are little plastic pins on the bodies, parts, and then everything more or less will push together. Now you have to keep in mind that this is very old plastic and it will have warped a little bit through the years. But once you have everything about as far as it will go, then you grab the metal tabs and you just give them a little bit of a turn. They don't need a lot. There's no way they're going to pull back through those little slots. There we go. Like that. And then you've got these red caps that we just talked about. Let me try dragging you closer. Yeah. Camera's kind of leaning, but you guys can just uh, lean as well. And if you are worried about losing the red caps, you could put a little, little bit of glue on there, but friction fit normally is enough. Okay. So we've got all that back together, got the back on, we've got the head on, let's see if we can still work. Okay, we still walk. Let's move the camera back again now. Get back there. And then. So if you were bent down and you wanted to pick something up, then you could actually close in on it and pick it up. And then you could straighten up with it. Or you could raise the arm. Well, I'm going to open that up. There we go. And there's the arms back down again. Uh, the dome. I've got the dome sitting over here. Here's the dome piece. So you can see there's a, a little tab there, a little tab there. And that allows the dome to snap back on. In this case, the dome is a little bit warped. Again, this kind of plastic, that's going to happen. So I'm not going to force that. In this uh, very top part, there would normally be, aim that up, a red, same color as the ears, a little red antenna piece, very fragile, very small. 
I can't imagine that piece lasting even three seconds in the hands of a of a kid. And uh, Ozzy that I'm repairing this for probably has that piece. There was no reason to send that to me. He was sending me the robot because it wasn't running. And I said in both cases, since all the wiring was good and it wasn't running, I had to take the back off so that I could get into where the motor brushes are and spray in some contact cleaner. And then with power applied, spin the gear on the end of the motor shaft until it started up and then while it's running spray some more contact cleaner in there because basically all that happens is there's grease on the commutator in the motor where the brushes sit and once that grease solidifies up it it doesn't conduct it's not soft anymore so the brushes can't conduct the motor doesn't run it's like an open circuit so once you can get a little cleaner in there to dissolve a little of that grease and make the grease greasy again instead of solid then the brushes can make a contact and things run. That's why it's kind of a good idea if you've got battery operated toys to run them for a short period of time every year so that the grease doesn't solidify up and the motors don't quit working. In this case uh, the duct isn't a hard one to get into if everything is still original and hasn't been broken. If someone has re-glued things or things have been cracked it can be more difficult to repair. But. Uh, little inside look at the Duck Extra Man, which inspired Japan's Mr. Mercury robot.